And here we are with Monaco MCO. I am catching up on the request for analysis as it is early Saturday morning and one was made by Vogue Fighter 420. Why don't you see if I can do a MCO analysis. He's done his own TA analysis and probably wants to do a compare and contrast. Perfectly fine. Happy to oblige. Sorry it took a little longer. So again here is a clean chart of MCO. Now this was a mighty fall. I went all the way back. I think it was $4,418 it started from. And it almost fell, looks like, in just hours. <laughs> on its debut. Now I don't know the intent, malice, or mistakes, or whatever might be involved in this, but this clearly looks like a pump and dump. While many of the ICOs are good coins, uh, good or bad coins, I'm seeing a lot of these skydiving red lines at the genesis point of these ICOs. And I have to say, and I've said this again, I'm going to keep saying it, I see a lot of YouTube personalities out there shilling for these ICOs, shamelessly getting paid for it, knowing they're going to dump it themselves as well. And what that creates is a lot of bag holders. Okay, a lot of people can get hurt. And, you know, my mother said, what goes around comes around. So anyone who had any malintent or set up intents or whatever really happened, it'll come back to bite you. Anyways, I always tell my kids, always be kind, never go out of your way to hurt people. It'll come back to bite you. And when I say always be kind, I also say don't be stupid about it. <laughs> now I want to go on record here. I caught this swing. It's in my blogs. My Elliott Wave analysis and chart pattern analysis, I think I had caught this triangle. It's in one of the, my older Kaboom August announcements, po blog posts. But let's see what's happened since then. I haven't done this in a little while, so let's see. Let's, let's do an Elliott Wave count first. One, two. This is a typical two with a downward pointing triangle. Three, four. <coughs> now in Elite Wave Analysis, Wave 1 and 2 has a certain rule-based relationship. The bottom of 2 cannot equal or exceed the start of 1. Check. No issues on that. Wave 3 cannot be the shortest amongst 1, 3, and 5. 1 is automatically longer than 1. I'm sorry, 3 is automatically longer than 1. Check. Here we have an extended fifth. And a fifth wave just needs five subwaves. One, two, three, four, five. And all together these five waves are interrelated based on Fibonacci ratios. The reason why they are interrelated based on Fibonacci ratio is the golden ratio is throughout our biology, 
physics, our galaxies, the vortex of our galaxies, the spiral of a seashell, the um, turning of our double helix in our DNA molecules, strands, the folding of proteins, they're all related by Fibonacci ratios. And price pattern is no different. Why? Price pattern is measuring the reflection of sentiment. And sentiment has a duality, fear and greed. And those two are very fickle, going back from panic, euphoria, euphoria, panic, and so on. And these price patterns here is a reflection of the interaction between the fear and greed sentiment. I always believe there is a famous saying that says, what are words but symbols of symbols, hence twice removed from reality. Now if thought is behind the sentiment and price projection is then reflected in a graph and then we try to measure that, Elliott Waves is just a symbol of symbols that is twice removed from the original thought. That's why it's not perfect. That's why no technical analysis out there is perfect. The uh, degree of accuracy of a technical analysis is based primarily on the analyst, him or herself, not on the technique. I'll repeat that. The degree of accuracy and precision is primarily based on the analyst, him or herself, and not the technique. Because a lot of judgment calls and gut feeling calls has to have to be made. So uh, now that I've given a brief intro, we have five waves. After five waves, there must be a three wave correction. So one, two, three, four, five, we have to have a correction. Now here's an extended fifth, which is very common now in cryptos. Not as common as like here inequities. You, you do see them. You do certainly see the extended fifths, but not as frequently. And usually when you have an extended fifth, you get a big crash. You get a big correction to usually to the level of prior wave two region. And this came pretty close to it so far. One of the tendencies in early waves when you get an extended fifth where the fifth wave is the longest. And the usually in equities, wave three is extended. And five, wave five, usually about the same as wave one in height. But wave five is extended, so it's gonna take a very deep, deep, deep retracement to maybe, I usually say to the region of four, but in this case, region of somewhere in the wave two. And as I said, it came close to it. So we have five waves. How can we count the correction? Is it done? That's the key. Well, before I count the correction, let me draw some trend lines. One there. One day. Now, if I then take a look at the ABC correction, I can then kind of think, all right, I would prefer A to be here, B, C to actually go to where the actual price region of wave two is. Like so. That's what I would prefer. So that means one more dip. So we have one, two, three, four, five, three, one, two, three, four, five. So what I would get 
kind of correction I would get is So let me tell you another f unique personality trait of cryptos. More often than equities, I am seeing the A being the longest. In equities, in, in stocks, you see the C as the longest. But in, e in uh, cryptos, I am seeing the A as the longest, like this. Perfectly fine. I always see each individual stock or coin as a personality. And as I began to count it more repeatedly, every time beginning with a clean chart, count more, I see and then notice and identify certain nuances of that personality trait. And for cryptos overall, I just told you one, extended fifth is one of their personality traits. A being the longest instead of C as another personality trait. And they also like to make long, very extended corrections. The time it takes took for this correction is more than twice the time it took to climb the five waves from a time-wise. So they should take the time on the corrections. That's why it can be testing, especially to novice, newbie technical analysts. We just get drawn out and, and you say, oh, screw this, I'm out of here, you sell and go, and then by the time you go, right when you go, it goes off. <laughs> You'll experience that for the Many times, I'm sure, as a newbie. So here is A5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, and then I'm going to expect 5. So this is called a zigzag. So I have A, B, C. So I have A, B, C, and I'm going to show you what a zigzag is. Zigzag has one, two, three, four, five. Five waves compose the wave A. One, two, three, four, five. And then you get three waves, A, B, C. A, B, C, three, A, B, C, and this C has five waves. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect textbook. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five for A, one, two, three, four, five for A, A, B, C for B, A, B, C for B, and then you need five waves down. This is called a five, three, five. Not a zip, zig, zag, five, three, five, oh, not four, three, five. <coughs> and that's what I'm projecting here. If that's the case, 
So then I have five, three, so I can say, and label this as like this. One, two, three, four, Try that again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I need five waves here, but I have to do five, three, five. And if this is a zigzag, then it'll go below this. It'll bust through, breach this. And go towards where the price zone of two is. So this is my expectation, primary expectation. Now, when Elliott wave and my chart pattern doesn't exactly say the same thing. Then I kind of get rid of the labels and look at it again. This is a pretty long support, pretty strong support. About the same for the resistance. This here is called a bullish wick. This small price piercing right here. <coughs> and a bullish wick means it reaches it but quickly comes back. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe if I'm doing 535, five, what else can it be? To maybe try and jive it. I try to jive the pattern with the count. If the two are in conflict, I try to figure out why. And then I try to identify a count that the pattern and the count can both augment. The other unique, very common feature of cryptos also is symmetrical triangles. So if I wanted to see if I have this can jive with a count, I could maybe do something like this. So this crashes down and then it starts doing an A, B, C, D, E. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Or you can say one, two, three. And th this is a symmetrical triangle that has three ways for each letter. Three, 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 three. three. Some people will count this as an A, and I think that's incorrect. It doesn't begin here, no, A, B, C, D, no. It has to touch after on a downtrend, once it finishes the downtrend, and then you can start counting the A, B, C, D, E. That is the correct way of counting it. So we have three, A, B, C, so A, B, C, so A, B, C, a three for C, 
D N E and usually when the E is on the top line price will break down so now it's jiving the symmetrical triangle is jiving with the count I had for the ABC correction. This is <coughs> And um, the ABCDE triangle is another personality feature of cryptos in its commonality. I believe here is Bitcoin right now. This is what I counted last night. Kind of last night I said we have A in a three wave ABC. A, B, C, B, to give a B, three wave A, B, C for C, A, B, C for D, A, B, C for E, and it followed it pretty closely. Look at that. And when th in this case, E landed in the bottom line, so we're going to break up. Sure enough, it did. Pretty good. Not bad at all, and that's not too shabby. This is, by the way, Bitcoin doing exactly the same triangle. But in this case, it's breaking up because the E is in the bottom line. For Monaco, the E isn't going to be in the top line. Notice also, I didn't count this as an A right here. This is an, is an uptrend. So I wait for the first down, A, B, C, D, E. I don't count this as an A, A, B, C, D, E. And I see that being mistake being made by a lot of the newbies, so you might want to be careful on that. And this breakout is pretty amazing, very nice. And check this out, look at this. I'm mean, talking about patterns. Talking about patterns, this is a very nice. Beautiful. Bullish flag. A miniature consolidation after the energy took. It's going to break out of this as well. It might make it again. Break out, make it again, maybe a triangle. Okay. This was Bitcoin giving the ex real life example of the uh, symmetrical triangle. Back to Monaco. So I think Monaco has maybe a bit more down to go to finish the correction. Is why it had an extended fifth wave. Wave five was the longest. And usually, when wave five is extended, the retracement is very deep as it was here as it was, but in looking at the chart pattern and the Elliott wave count, there may be one more low. Now, this bullish wick leads me to th consider one more thing. But before I do that, let me just say, the best time to make an entry to start buying is when? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? No. The best time to buy is at the terminal end of an ABC correction. If this count is correct, around here. Let's say from here to here, if you want to go that broad. But let me say what, why from here to here. Why I'm including this area in the price. We can have potentially
this. Get rid of this for now. And I put this up because of the bullish wick right here. And these bullish wicks are, and the, are very um, reliable. That's why I'm not ignoring it. It could be done because this retrace is pretty deep as it is. It's in the price to um, the price to wave to range. Just about. If you look at the top of wave two, bottom of wave two, C overlaps it by about 25-30% of that. So it did technically go into the wave two. A, B, C, this could be it. And we could have one, two, three, four, five. A, B, C, expanded of correction. But if this is correct, then what we could get is one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> This is what we could get. So this would be my very close alternate count. Okay. That means if C is done, my entry would be to buy around this region. So I would cast two buy entry ladders. I call it laddering in. And I've already seen a lot of comments and questions about laddering. So let me give you a quick ladder example using this. Might as well. So if I want to make an entry right now, I would never buy, let's say I want to buy 100,000 coins of Monaco. Right? I would never, ever, like I used to when I was a newbie, I would never buy 100,000 right here on a single transaction. Nope. Because if you do, sure enough, if the price goes down below your buy point, how are you going to feel when you see that happening? Mentally, emotionally. It's going to suck. And then it's going to cause you, if it keeps going down and down and down, it's going to cause you, let's say my primary account is white, it's going to create a lot of mental pain, put you in a crabby mood, you're going to be grouchy at your wife, spouse, kids, colleagues, because you know you're losing money. And the technique that I have to prevent that is what I call laddering. So I would make, let's say, a buy entry here, a small, maybe 10,000. Then I would do a find my, here's a support line. Draw the support lines. It's a support here, resistance here. So I would draw a line like this. And by another 10,000 right there. That's another support line I can draw right here. That's a very nice support line. By 10,000, going across the bottoms of these prices. Okay, what about a resistance? Here's nice resistance right here. If it goes past this, I'd like to buy some more. I'd get another 10,000 right here. Okay, so I have 40,000 that I've spread out my buys on. What if it goes lower? Well, I'm going to put it, there was a, maybe there's a T bit of support here. I'm going to put I'd do maybe so 2,500 coins right here, okay? I'd assign 2,500 coins to be bought. 
What about above? Precious could would be good over there, I think. Another ten thousand. One over here. But I'm making it blue because I'm gonna assign a lot less number of coins on the blue. So let's see what I have. I have one, two I have a number one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I have five wongs. Consider this like a ladder. That's why I call it a bilateral. Entry ladder. I have five wongs. One, two, three, four, five. That's 50,000 shares. And then I have 5,000 each. Okay. That gives, gives me a total of 60,000 shares. So earlier I said 100,000. Let's say I want to buy 60,000 shares. Coins of Monaco. This is how I would spread out my ladder. This would be a pretty good ladder. Because if the if I buy here and price goes down, you're almost gonna feel happy that you're gonna get a lower price right here. Price goes back, it's going it's gonna trigger the unfilled ones. And it may not fill this one. Usually I only get three to four ladders three to four wongs in the ladder field. And that's a good thing. I never feel bad because all of them didn't get filled. The reason is the innate design of this technique has it so that you will have some wongs not filled and that quote unquote forces you to have a certain amount of cash at hand. It prevents you from being fully invested at 100%. I never recommend margin. Never do. Okay, so I hope this video has been helpful. Look, I hope I have earned the right to ask you for your upvote, follow, and re-steam. The aim of my blog is to help and do no harm. I provide analysis for free. I enjoy doing it because I want to help. It's my way of giving back. If you can spread the word so others can get maybe um, the visibility to my analysis and an opportunity to also maybe get their analysis and do diligence augmented from my uh, technical analysis, that'll be really helpful. I'd be grateful. Thank you.